quoted often by Srila Prabhupada in his lectures. It comes in a series of verses describing the process of bhakti. That holds starting from verse 18 onward to about verse 32, I think, is a whole synopsis of the whole science of bhakti yoga. And this is one of the key verses. If not, the, no, it's not the key verse, but it's one of the key verses in that section. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Satam Prasangam Mamavirya Samvido Sandra 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 Rasayana Kata, 
satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and thereafter he is free and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. Please repeat, in the association of pure devotees, Discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Is pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and thereafter he is freed, and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. The process of advancing in Krishna consciousness and devotional service is described here. The first point is that one must seek the association of persons who are Krishna conscious and who engage in devotional service. Without such association, one cannot make advancement. Simply by theoretical knowledge or study, one cannot make appreciable advancement. One must give up the association of materialistic persons and seek the association of devotees because without the association of devotees, one cannot understand the activities of the Lord. Generally, people are convinced of the impersonal feature of the absolute truth. Because they do not associate with devotees, they cannot understand that the absolute truth can be a person and have personal activities. This is a very difficult subject matter, and unless one has personal understanding of the absolute truth, there is no meaning to devotion. Service or devotion cannot be offered to anything impersonal. Service must be offered to a person. 
Nanda Modis cannot appreciate Krishna consciousness by reading the Srimad Bhagavatam or any other Vedic literature wherein the activities of the Lord are described. They think that these activities are fictional, manufactured stories, and the spiritual life is not explained to them in the proper mood. To understand the personal activities of the Lord, one has to seek the association of devotees. And by such association, when one contemplates and tries to understand the transcendental activities of the Lord, the path to liberation is open and he is freed. One who has firm faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes fixed and his attraction for association with the Lord and the devotees increases. Association with devotees means association with the Lord. The devotee who makes this association develops the consciousness of rendering service to the Lord and then, being situated in the transcendental position of devotional service, he gradually becomes perfect. Om Gyan Timiranta Syam Gyanajana Sarakaya Chaksu Vinatami Antasma Shri Vinayana Maha Shri Chaitanya Mahavishnam Stati Kami Amutai Sahaya Rupa Brahmayam Tadati Swam Tadanti Kam Jai Sri Vishnu Chaitanya Brahmunitya Shri Adeta Galahar Shivasani Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in a very succinct way, concise way, Shiva Prabhupada has described how to make advancement in devotional service. And the constant point that is being made here is two things. There's activities and then there's the environment for where the activities become successful. It's not just the activities, but it's the environment which provides the support and the impetus to understand and efficiently apply the activities. So, persons may apply the activities, but if the environment is not, what we say, according to Shastra, not only, according to Shastra means conducive, but we can't use the word conducive. We have to say according to Shastra, which makes it more exact. And what is that exact? And one must associate with and hear from devotees. And this is the process for making advancement and becoming fixed, as Prabhupada said. One becomes fixed in the process of devotional service. But in this world, and we see there are ways to associate and there's ways to avoid association. Because the living being is by nature a social being, association is a natural thing. And sometimes we see, even though people may not like to associate with other humans, they'll find some kind of form of life to associate with. Whether it's an animal or something. So everyone needs, wants, yearns for association <clears throat> because in and of our, in and of ourself in the material world we are incomplete you can't love yourself you can't have a wonderful loving relationship with yourself you look in the mirror and you say oh i love you <laughs> and then you offer a nice beautiful love song to yourself <laughs> well that's satisfying <laughs> <laughs> and, and if it does, you're mentally deranged. But it doesn't really. It doesn't. One has to have association. And with another living being, in order to exchange what we say loving relationship, 
But the loving relationships we're exchanging goes two ways. It goes up and it goes sideways. It's going, it's going perpendicular and it's going horizontal at the same time. The horizontal is the basis where it starts, but it goes up and it also goes this way. And that is in the association we develop relationships with other devotees and we awaken our relationship with Krishna. Like that, both. And what is the process? Satam prasangam of a various samvida. To hear in the association of great souls the glories of the Lord. To chant the glories of the Lord and to hear the glories of the Lord is the, what we say, recommended and proven process. Not just recommended, but it's proved to be successful. Because those who have done it have reached perfection in that process. And what is about it that is just so wonderful is that it's pleasing. The word is, let me see, the word pleasing. Pleasing is rasayana. It's rasayana. Rasa means there is no actual English uh, definition of the word rasa. Mm. There is a description of what rasa is in order to give an understanding. Mm. And that the description eludes me right now because it's very deep. But rasa means a certain type of flavor that is very relishable. To use a a loose example, it's not a good example, is that every type of food has a particular taste. And one may relish a particular type of food because of that particular taste of that food. So that, that relishing is a kind of like the rasa or the pleasing aspect of that food which makes that food distinct from other foods because there's different types of flavors. So there's a sweet flavor that comes with hearing the glories of the Lord. And how is that sweetness, what we say, accepted in two ways, through the heart and through the ear. When the sound goes into the ear, it awakens within the heart devotion to the Lord. Because to hear about the Lord means to hear about His wonderful activities. His names unlimited, His forms unlimited, His qualities unlimited, His pastimes are unlimited. And each is within the each category of the unlimited, there's different varieties of sweetness and flavor. It's like sometimes Someone gives you a box of chocolates. And then there's different kinds of chocolates in the box. There's the bitter kind, and then there's sweet, and all with the cherry in the middle with the juice in it. And then there's maybe another kind with white chocolate. And then it's just like a variety of all chocolates. People like to do that. Where they give you a big box of sweets and there's all kinds of different flavors and shapes and colors and, and it's, it's really nice, right? You think, wow, this looks nice. You want to try this one and you try that one and you say, oh, maybe this one's even better. So there's a, there's a, like a variety of sweetness that just stays within the category of sweetness and it goes up and down in the category of sweetness, never falling away from the sweet. So in hearing the glories of the Lord, it awakens within the mind and the heart a type of attraction for Krishna that is very, very pleasing. Rasayana. It's Rasayana Kata. It's very sweet. Because Krishna is all attractive. Krishna is all attractive. And his pastimes, his names, his qualities attract the devotees and one more one gets attracted to hearing these pastimes, or of qualities, or names or forms, one wants more. But it's not like eating. When you eat, at a certain point you get full and you say enough. But not, not in 
when it comes to Krishna. It gets, it's always sweet and always getting better. And never, one can never get enough. One can never get enough. So this is the process of devotional service, but it starts by regularly hearing in the association of devotees. But Prabhupada makes a point, before we can really appreciate and actually benefit from the association of devotees, we have to give up the association of non-devotees. <clears throat> When Lord Chaitanya was asked by Sanatana Goswami, he was playing the part of a conditioned soul for the sake of teaching us. He said, What, my dear Lord, what is the first principle of one in devotional service? And Lord Chaitanya said, Asat Sangha Teyaga E Vaishnava Achar. Asat Sangha. Asa means materialistic. One should, tiaga means to give up. One should give up the association of materialistic persons and a Vaishnava chart. One should take the association of the Vaishnavas. So he didn't say just take the association of the Vaishnavas. He said give up the association of non devotees. So sometimes people will get bewildered. Well, I have a job and I have a family. So how is it possible that, that I can actually follow this principle in my present situation? So that requires a little bit of an explanation of what is association. Because you can be in the same physical proximity of other people and not being associated with them. It's like you can be here with association of devotees, but you could be somewhere else in the mind. You could be planning, well, when this class is over, you could be make, planning your whole day right now. But you're not really with the association because your mind is not there. So association means to develop a affection for that type of association. So if you develop an affection or a what we say an attraction for materialistic association, that is called what we say asa. Or that is brings one down. One cannot practice devotional service if one still is attached to associating with non-devotees. In other words, I do it for some satisfaction, some pleasure, something. Something about me that wants this association to happen. But a person maybe in the material world who's a devotee doesn't, even though they're interacting with non-devotees, they may not associate with them if one does not develop affection for that. So the affection comes in the form of hearing non-devotional topics or mundane topics where people like to share these things with others about their life, about their likes and dislikes. So avoiding that means avoiding materialistic association. Valvas uses an example. A king is sitting on the throne and there's a bug that's sitting on the king. Now, is the bug associating with the king? No. Although, you might say the bug is very close to the king, being on the body of the king, but there's no association. There has to be a like-mindedness that comes with that association. So we sometimes, in our day-to-day -day life, we find ourselves in association with people who are materialistic. So one, if it's business-like, keep it business-like. And two, if it's an opportunity to give that person Krishna consciousness, then we are giving association and not accepting association. So Prabhupada said, give your association to others and they can be benefited by that 
but do not accept their association. You see the understanding. And that takes practice. Because, because we are social beings, we like to associate with other people, and sometimes we fall into the category of uh, developing a, a similar mentality due to that association. And therefore, we can't really appreciate the association of the bodies, or we cannot fully benefit by the association of the bodies, because we still have attachment for materialistic association. So very carefully avoid that association by keeping it on a very formalistic level, get your job, just like when you go to the store, you might see the grocer, and it might be somebody you know, so you say hello to him, and he says hello to you, you say hi, you know, how are you, oh, fine, okay, how's the family, yeah, okay. And then you pay your, you know, you pay for your groceries and you leave. It's like, well, the thing is, you don't have a loving attraction for the grocer. You don't develop an affection, but you have some interaction because there is some social need. So one has to see how that unless one has developed attraction, and we might also say a type of affection for devotee association, we will try to fulfill that void with materialistic association because it's just natural to want to associate. And association means exchange. So therefore, one should see that in the association of devotees, one can become Krishna conscious. This is what this is the benefit of the association of devotees. You can find Krishna in that association. And here the process is mentioned by hearing the glories of the Lord. The glories of the Lord are as unlimited as the Lord Himself. And therefore one can find a particular type of of quality that attracts one to Krishna and when we say absorb oneself in that quality whatever that characteristic and then because Krishna is unlimited even one of his qualities no matter what it is just like his quality of of fighting people who have a particular nature they like to you know, be in competition with others. The competitive person. You find that people that people are there in the world. They always they're always in a competitive mood. So but with taking up that keeping that mood but absorbing yourself in Krishna who is a who is always fighting in so many different ways. And he always wins. But he makes it exciting. He's always making it exciting as he's fighting. Because sometimes he looks like he's losing. Because, because he wins all the time, he wants to make it a little fun. And sometimes other people who are, especially the demigods, are live watching the fight, they get a little nervous. And when he was fighting with Rani Kashipu, he played with us. And at one point, Rani Kashipu seemed to be in any, having the upper hand. But the Lord was just doing that just to have some fun. Yeah. Because if you win all the time, it's kind of boring. <laughs> but Krishna never loses. <laughs> but he makes the fight interesting. So and in his different types of fighting, there's also varieties on how he fights and who he fights with, and how the whole thing plays itself out. You like when he's fighting with uh, with Hiranyaksha. Hiranyaksha, uh, what was it? at one point, knocked the Lord's club out of his hand. <laughs> and, uh, and so the Lord allowed him to, to have that little bit upper hand. And Hiranyaksha was very gracious. He allowed him to pick up his club and fight again. <laughs> so they were observing the etiquette of proper military fighting. Mm -hmm. So, if you have that tendency, 
Then you can observe yourself in that aspect of Krishna. Or whatever pastime. Look, Krishna's pastime is so sweet. No matter what the pastime is, or whether he's killing demons, or whether he's playing with his friends in the groves of Vrindavan, or he's teasing Srimati Radharani in different ways, getting her angry. Or whatever he's doing, he's stealing butter and throwing it all over and feeding the monkeys. They're all very sweet because they're all centered around Krishna. And one who starts to hear these pastimes more and more in the association of devotees who have what is called ruchi. They have a taste for it. They want to hear it. In other words, to come and associate and hear means to bring in your eagerness with you. And not just be there and just think, oh, okay, well, here we go. We got an hour. No, it's like, I want to hear more, I want to learn more, I want to just understand more about Krishna. That attraction awakens bhakti. And then from bhakti comes rati. Uh, I mean, from Shraddha, faith comes Rati. What is that Rati? Attachment. One gets attached to hearing about Krishna. One only wants to hear about Krishna. One becomes unhappy or feels somewhat lost when they're not engaged in hearing about the glories of the Lord. It becomes a sweet taste. Like that. And then one misses that taste when it's not, when one is not engaged in such things. And then, from that attraction and real Prabhupada's his real devotion and devotional service actually awakens. And one is on the path to perfection. So this is the sweetness of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes people say this Krishna consciousness is just a lot of austerity, so we have to do this, we have to do that, we have to do this, we have to do that. But we don't we forget to go for the sweetness. The, the, when uh, I remember many years ago, yeah, Vrindavan Ashwari, she used to make these big giant cakes, huge cakes. She'd stay up like 24 hours a day. Sometimes when you build a house, you have to build it in sections, then you put it together. She would make the cake in sections and then put it together into one gigantic cake. And you look at it and you think, where do I start? <laughs> Maybe I just, you know, just sit on it since it's so big. You know? So it was, but everything about the cake was sweet, inside, outside, or under. So she's like the king of sweet makers. When she gets going making sweets, forget it. <laughs> if you don't have a sweet tooth, you, you will have one. <laughs> so that Krishna's pastimes are like that. So the limited varieties and qualities of sweetness, like that. And one gets a taste. So this is Krishna consciousness. This attracts Krishna, this attracts the heart and the mind to Krishna more and more. To develop that taste, to hear and chant the book, in the association of devotees. Because in the association of devotees, one can only relish that. Materialist per persons may sit in the association of devotees and hear these pastimes, but they'll think, these are nice stories. Somebody created these stories to give a little bit of philosophical meaning. So it's really about the philosophical meaning. The story is just some kind of way to package the philosophy. That's, that's what they say. No, they think like, it's fictional. What do they call it? What's that word they use? Uh, mythology. It's mythology. Someone's fertile brain came up with this. Why? Because they have no bhakti. They have no attraction for the Lord. And therefore they can't understand the Lord. And therefore they rationalize and hypothesize and start to think in terms of material conceptions, which they're familiar with. And by doing that, they simply miss out it's like, we call it licking the outer 
bottles of honey. So somebody gives you a jar of honey and says, here, here's some really nice honey. And you just start licking the outside of the bottle. What do you get? You just kind of mess your tongue up, that's all. And you have to go to the doctor. So it's not really about simply hearing. And you see, one has to have, uh, one needs to have a taste when, for this, one has to be attracted to hearing. So practicing hearing more and more. And then it awakens gradually because it's there in the heart. Bhakti is hidden. Bhakti is like a, a great treasure. That one has, one's carrying around a huge, gigantic, rare, and very wonderful treasure. We're all carrying it around. And the thing is, we can't find it because we don't know how to get to it. Here's how to get to it by hearing the glories of the Lord, by chanting the glories of the Lord, by telling others the glories of the Lord, by remembering Krishna's glories like that. At any time, you can simply just turn on to it. Something you heard in your mind is in transcendence. Just like that. By remembering Krishna, his pastimes, his qualities, his names, his forms. And it's sweet. There's nothing unpleasant about it. Even when Krishna kills demons. You know, killing is not a very wonderful thing. But, and therefore, people in the material world see that something is killing as being bad, negative. You know, they use, it's all about something that is not pleasant. But when Krishna kills, everyone benefits, even the person who gets killed. So it's, therefore, everything about Krishna is wonderful. There's one whole chapter in the Bhagavatam called Wonderful Krishna. <laughs> it's all about his qualities. They're just sitting. Krishna's killing all these demons. He's performing all these activities. All the cowherd men get together and they think, who's this person? Who's our little friend here? He's your son, Nanda Maharaj, but everybody, we're all attracted. In fact, we love him more than... You do sometimes. <laughs> our love for him is more stronger than our love for our own children. Well, who is he? He's wonderful. And so this whole story, this whole chapter is just describing all the wonderful activities of Krishna. And they're just talking it one after another. One cannot get away from hearing about others. One cannot get away from speaking about others. It's a fact. Everyone speaks about other people. Everyone hears about other people. It's just the way life is. So therefore, replacing the one day with the, the super one day, the transcendental, our consciousness goes up. Something to hear about Krishna more and more and more. But how do you get a taste for hearing about Krishna? Here is the secret. I don't have that taste. I know what you're saying is correct, but how do I get that taste? I have taste for other things, and I always find myself doing other things and not hearing about Krishna. How do I get that taste? So the Bhagavatam says, Sri Shusha Sardamasya, Vasudeva Kataruji, Shamiyat Seva Vipa Purnya Tirtana Sevana. By taking time to serve the Vaishnavas, especially the Vaishnavas who are, what we say, free from all material desires, great souls, one does great service. So we might say that devotional service is absolute. But then again, it's absolute and it's more absolute. That's why sometimes we hear Krishna's pastimes are sweet, sweeter and sweetest. So there's always sweetness in all three, but there's an intensification of the sweetness that comes in the type of pastimes that are being glorified. So in the same way, service is absolute, but then what is that service that is considered great service? Serving pure devotees. By serving great souls, then the, 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 the verse says great services. 
And by that service, automatically, the word automatically is there, one gets an attraction to hear the glories of the Lord. The perfect example was Narada Muni. Simply by assisting his mother in serving these great sages who were staying in one hotel where she was employed as a, 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 a maid servant, he got the association of great souls and he was doing service. At one time, just once, he took their remnants and that was it. His material life was finished. Simply by taking the remnants, his material life was over. He developed an attraction. At such a young age, he was only a five-year-old boy for devotional service. That is the power of associating with great souls. We can't really, what we say, describe it and we can't underestimate it. We can't overestimate it. We can't overestimate it. We can we can underestimate it. Uh, yeah, underestimate it. That is the power. So therefore, when one serves great souls, automatically you want to hear about Krishna more and more and more. And then that service begins. So following the instructions of the spiritual master and serving the Vaishnavas, that develops. Because following the instructions of the spiritual master is serving great souls. It's the same thing. And then when we do that, Krishna within the heart develops, within, it starts to awaken within us attraction for Krishna more and more. So this, this process is somewhat scientific. It works in such a way. But it all centers around associating and, with any, and serving great souls. And then one will develop a taste to associate with devotees more and more and want to hear the glories of the Lord. Maharaj Prikshit, he had seven days to live. We all have seven days to live. Right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We all live seven days. That's the seven days. So these seven days, he had seven days to live. And he was thinking, I'm a king, I have a family, I have responsibilities. Now I have seven days left. He just put it all away and just went down to the banks of the Ganga, actually it's the Jumuna River, and sat there and he was fasting till death. He was thinking, I'm just going to fast and fix my mind on the Supreme. But then the word got out that the king of the world, he was the king of the world at the time, has left everything and he's fasting till death. And all the great sages from all over the universe came to meet this king. But one person who came that was very special was the son of Vyasadeva, Sukadeva Goswami. And everyone was recommending, she would all come around in Maharaj Prakshna and recommend what he should be doing. He should be doing this, he should be performing this, he can do Because many of these sages were pure devotees. They were tapasis, they were yogis, they were people who performed various types of spiritual practices. But when Sukadeva Goswami came, they all honored him because they understood that he is the most advanced. And he, took, and he just started to speak the glories of the Lord. And that attracted everyone to hear, but especially Maharaj Pariksha. Why? If somebody says to you, my dear madam, my dear sir, you have a week to live. The doctors have concluded and it's been confirmed. There's no, you, you have 168 hours to go. That's it. That's how many hours in a week. So you're going to think, hmm, I'm going to buy a new car. I'm going to paint my house. I'm going to get my computer, you know, upgraded. 
I'm gonna go take a vacation. Even for I mean for, for a devotee, if you had someone said that to you, think about it now. This, this, this is a little exercise we can do. Put yourself in that position. Really. You have one week to live. What would you do? Think about it. In fact, Sukadeva Goswami, I mean, Maharaj Pariksha had a week to live. We don't know how long we have. Prabhupada said, you don't even, there's not even seven minutes guaranteed. Doctors know that. So, we might think, what, how to use the remaining time for in the best possible way. So the Maharaj Pariksit simply wanted to absorb himself in the glories of the Lord. That's all. So he used that time in the best possible way and he achieved perfection. I would say you can achieve perfection in one moment. What to speak about seven days. If the mind is in the right consciousness and one hears the glories of the Lord, these two things, if your consciousness is in the right state and you hear the glories of the Lord, you can reach perfection. Well, this, is, this is the process of bhakti. It's very powerful. It takes one directly to the lotus feet of the Lord. If one is eager and is hearing the glories or chanting the glories of the Lord. Like that. So sometimes we want to, we should conjecture sometimes or just think, I don't know how much time I have. I might be young, but Prahlad Maharaj destroyed that whole philosophy about being young and living long when he spoke to his schoolmates. They say, Prahlad, 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 whatever you're saying is very nice, we understand devotional service is wonderful, but we're young. And Prahlad said, no, they said, when we get old, and he said, old means just before you die. And then this it goes on, no one knows when death will come. Should I tell you a story? It's a nice story. It's not a nice story. It's really not a nice story. It has a nice message, but the story is not nice. There was, a, we, were, we were preaching in this one college in Mumbai. And uh, the devotees from the Chalpati temple were going into this college and they were meeting with these students. And a little student club developed in the college. So there was regular programs. So many of the students were coming. This was a medical college. One of the top medical colleges in, in India. So, um, it was getting on in the semester, and finally, one boy who was coming, he said, he told his friends, who were also medical students, I'm not going to go with the devotees anymore. I'm going to spend the rest of the semester studying hard. I want to get top grades. I want to be the top person in my class. So they said, well, the devotees are coming tonight. He said, no, you go. I'm going to study. So he didn't go, and they went, and this went on, and he didn't come. And finally, when the graduation time came, he graduated top in his class. He became the, I don't know, there's a certain name, when you get the highest honors of the student, cum laude or something, something. It's in Latin, C-U-M-L-A-D. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, it's cum it, laude or something like that. It's a very high, what we say, position. So he got it, he got it. So now his friend says, well, you graduated. Now you came first, the devotees are coming to the college tonight. This is going to be the last program for the semester. Please come. He said, well, you know, there's a party. 
There's a graduation party, and I want to go. <laughs> so they said, all right, you go, and I'll go. So he went to the party, and then at the party they were all dancing. So he was dancing. In the middle of the dance floor, he had a heart attack, fell, and that was it. He died. No previous medical record, no history of any problems medically. Very healthy. He was just dancing, and all of a sudden, boom, finished. His heart just turned off. 23 years old. I was around when this was happening. This happened about 10 years ago. And then all his fellow students, they got real serious. <laughs> they really got serious. And then they start really coming to the temple more and then taking up Krishna consciousness even more. So here's an example of a person from a material perspective that had everything. He was young, tops of his class, very intelligent, also very popular amongst his friends. One second, it's all over. So this is the nature of this material world. No one can guarantee you know, longevity of life. It's just the way it is. Everyone wants to live long. Everyone thinks everyone else will die, but not me. That's the psychology. When, they, when uh, Yangaraj asked Yudhisthira, you know, what is the most amazing thing? What is the most amazing thing? He said, Yudhisthira was very intelligent, and he said, the most amazing thing is everyone is seeing their friends Relatives and people in general dying, and you're thinking, not me. It's just not going to happen to me. It always happens to somebody else. <laughs> and it's amazing. It's amazing. So, therefore, one cannot guarantee anything. But, therefore, one should, one should use every moment as if it's your last. If you live life, if you live life like that, when every moment is your last, you will get the most out of life. Why? Because then you'll do what's important at every moment. You will not waste time. You will not do things that will simply distract you from the actual goal of life. Um, so therefore, uh, Prabhupada would do that. He would say, what is the most valuable thing you have? And, you know, we can say, well, but the most valuable thing I have is my money or my family or somebody else. Prabhupada say, no, it's time. Time is the most, so don't waste a moment simply wasting time in materialistic affairs and forgetting about the goal of life. So therefore, prasanga, satam prasanga mamavir, take opportunities to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. This is a wonderful exercise. The devotees come together to chant the holy names of the Lord and to hear about Krishna, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nisringadev, Lord Ramachandra, all the wonderful pastimes. When I read the Ramayan, it's, it's like there's this one devotee who's just now putting out a series of books on the Ramayana. He writes really, really amazing. I can't put it down. It's just like it's just, you just get so, so absorbed in it, you forget about time. Krishna's pastimes are like that. If once we get a taste for it, we want to get that taste. But the taste comes by serving great souls and by performing that activity. By, by being in that association and hearing about Krishna's pastimes, one develops an attraction for Krishna. And that, it's not that, that attraction is coming from outside. It's just like, I don't know how you say it, the nature of the body is to be healthy. So when the body gets sick, medicine comes from the outside to bring the body back to its natural healthy state. So Krishna's, hearing Krishna's pastimes is coming from the outside. 
to bring us back to our natural healthy state of, of spontaneous attraction for Krishna, which is not coming from outside, but with, which is coming from our existence. So the more we hear about Krishna, the more we get attracted to Krishna. The more we I'm giving this class because I want to spend more time hearing about Krishna. I'm doing it for myself. Because, so. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes we also, although we're preaching, we, we, sh we should be doing more of what we're preaching, and that is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Prabhupada, and even the Acharyas, the Acharyas, Prabhupada, and even the present spiritual masters have written so many books about the glories of the Lord, about the glories of the Lord's activities. It's an ocean of transcendental knowledge that's available. And every one of it is sweet. Everyone has a particular nature and there's a there's something that attracts your nature very quickly but krishna is so wonderful that he can attract us from all angles everything he does is so wonderful okay so this is a i don't know one of the key verses and then Prabhupada ends the purport and saying that the devotee who makes the association with the devotees develops the consciousness of rendering service to the lord being situated in that transcendental position, he becomes situ he becomes engaged in devotional service and gradually reaches perfection. Perfection is our nature. Anything? Any comments or questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Maharaj, for the nice lecture. Uh, there is, uh, like, often we notice that among the association of the devotees, uh, there is, like, you know, special than when we have a program like this or Sunday feast, like, we have, like, Bajan's that lecture, that Prashadam. We, we are a little bit like, so to say, like a robot, you know, in, in not a bad move, sense, but you know, we are just scheduled. So often we become a little bit impersonal because of that kind of programs. Mechanical. Mechanical. Yeah, mechanical. And, uh, but how to, how to appropriate associate with devotees? Because on the other hand, on the other hand, there is like, um, there's different ways to associate with. Because there is like, on the other hand, when we associate together in, so to say, informal way, there is like a tendency to become uh, mundane. In this. Yeah. So how to deal properly to, to, you know, to address this, so to say, human nature of other devotees and also be on the spiritual part of it. Well, just like now, you just heard the class. You just heard the class, so instead of just like forgetting about the class after it's over, talk about it, discuss it more. Um, one of the things that we used to do when I was in New Vrindavan, back in the early days when we first joined, is that uh, we used to work quite hard. To, I mean, not only quite hard, very hard. <laughs> and our schedule was tight. Very tight. So when it came to Bhagavatam class, most people fell asleep. <laughs> Don't worry, it's normal to fall asleep in class. Especially when I talk. So we had that constant situation where devotees were falling asleep. I mean, most of the devotees, not just a few. Sometimes even the speaker would fall asleep. <laughs> and I've seen it <laughs> So we try different things to keep the devotees awake. We would have like this plastic bottle with a nozzle on it and a big spray on it. <laughs> but that didn't work. But that didn't work. <laughs> 
So we try different things. Standing up, sometimes people would stand up and then he'd fall asleep standing up. And he'd fall over. This happened too. So one of the things, so we tried different things to see how we could keep devotees awake. So one of the things was, all right, we're going to start a policy now. Everyone has to ask somebody during the day what was class about. And then you would have to respond. So in order, everyone would get asked and everyone would be asking also. So that was became a rule now, you had to do that. So then the devotees would ask someone what was class about and then if he couldn't remember anything then he would fall, he fell asleep. So this, and what, what happened was, not only was it a way to keep the devotees awake, and listen, but it has stimulated Krishna Kata afterwards, or philosophic. In other words, we were discussing the philosophy after, after hearing the class. Oh, what did he say? Well, he said this, and then the discussion would go like this. So this was good. But you can do that. You can hear a class, and then you can ask, what was it about? Or you can say, what was that point he made? And then you start stimulating a little bit of Krishna Katha amongst the devotees. Work Katha is like, oh, we're always trying to think about how to keep the services going. That's nice. But it's, it doesn't say that in, a, in the Bhagavatam. It says, you know, Satam Prasangam Mamma Hearing the glories of the Lord, chanting the glories of the Lord is the essence of our spiritual perfection and the happiness to what we're looking for. It's, it's just the happiness we're looking for. So we practice that. We can think of different ways, just like one of my god sisters. She just, she had, she started a little sangha group where they would all come together in, in a particular day of the week and chant bhajans by the great souls. It was bhajan night. But not Hare Krishna. It was all the bhajans by Naratam Das, Thakur Bhakti, Vinodhaku, and like that. And you can do that also with, you know, sit there, read something, and then everyone discusses what you read. It's wonderful. It's really wonderful. But we're so busy. We have so many things we're doing. And it seems like to change our life is worse than, you know, taking wheatgrass juice. It's, did you ever taste wheatgrass juice? It's so bad. So we find it so hard to add these things to our life. It's terrible. <laughs> So the point I'm trying to make is that we can't see how to add this thing to our life. But the thing is, you just do it. You just have to be convinced that this is what I need to do. And you do it, and it works. You develop a taste for it. And then other people become attracted, and it grows. And sometimes it grows so big, you wind up having two or three groups at the same time. Was that the essence of your question? We get mechanical, yeah, we do get mechanical, we get routine. Because we, we lose the flavor of what we're doing. We chant our rounds, we're struggling to hear, hear nicely. But if we don't have a dola, I mean, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says that Hari Nam has to be coupled with Harikata. Otherwise it's not the process is not complete. Although we put a lot of emphasis and importance on chanting the holy names, he says that without Krishna Kata one cannot really come to the professional stage. 
And he gives a nice analogy. He calls it like Sarup City and something else. In other words, he says that Harinam is like Krishna and Krishna Kata is like Radharani. So without the pleasure and energy of the Lord, the Lord seems to be, he's not incomplete, but it, that, that sweetness and that attraction comes from his pleasure energy, which is his pastimes, his qualities. Yes. In the Rupsi of Nekta, the Satsang of Goswami, there was a talk with the Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Shiva Prabhupada. And now on the end, Bengals, Fear of Uttaramukha Smarti, Shabiti, Shabiti Tasira, Anasha, Sresa Strisha. And on the end, the Satsang of Nima, this Prabhupada speaks about it uh, in the point when the death comes, the, our Krishna consciousness will be tested. So he had two experiences. Near death experience. Okay, so in one of these points he remembered Krishna and in one he didn't. So what is the destination of the person who practices Krishna consciousness but he doesn't remember Krishna because of fear or something else? Well, it's not like he's completely lost, but at the same time, there is an element of, of distraction that comes. Um, it depends. If one is engaged in devotional service and is not remembering Krishna, but still is engaged in devotional service, then there's no loss. Because the, the devotion is, but if one is engaged in materialistic activities, and then somehow death comes along and one doesn't remember Krishna, that's different. One girl, she was a sacratan devotee. She asked Prabhupada, "I'm distributing books, and sometimes I don't remember. I don't remember the Lord when I'm distributing books. What happens if I die while I'm distributing books?" And Prabhupada said, Lord Chaitanya will force himself into your consciousness. That was his response. In other words, the Lord was so, is so pleased by one who is distributing the mercy to others that even if one forgets the Lord, the Lord doesn't forget his devotee. That's the Lord's kindness. But if we're engaged in material activities and then we're putting ourselves in a risky situation. Stay, try always be engaged in devotional service. So we heard that uh, Prabhupada said that in one uh, second we can become uh, Krishna consciousness. Krishna conscious, so if you can make, uh, elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, when your consciousness is right. Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoi, Lavavata Saru Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. A moment's association with a pure body means that one can reach perfection. So what does that mean? So the devotees asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, we've had so many association with you, but we're not perfect. And Prabhupada gave the understanding. He says when the wood is wet, 
You can't like it. You have to wait till the wood dries out. And as soon as it's dry and comes in contact with fire, immediately it ignites. <laughs> so the idea is to keep hearing until your consciousness is right. And then at that point when your consciousness is at and right, and then you hear the glories of the Lord, or you associate with the pure devotees, perfection is achieved. But you have, your consciousness has to be in the right state. So therefore Prabhupada said, keep on hearing, and gradually you'll come to that stage where sadhu sangha, uh, love of matta, love of matta becomes manifest. Love of matta means one eleventh of a second. So if you could take a second and divide it into eleven parts, one of those parts is the time period it takes to become Krishna conscious. If your consciousness is right. Mm -hmm. Oh, keep your consciousness in Krishna. That's all. <laughs> keep hearing, keep chanting, keep practicing. Gradually, you reach that stage where that love of mantra will manifest. Boom, boom, boom. Perfection is there. Šta znači pravilna svjesnost? Znači da pažljivo slučajamo sa iskrenom vjerom i šta tako? What does it mean right consciousness? That we are careful listening with the attention? Right entity. Completely submissive. Znači potpuno submissive. With faith. Hearing with complete faith and submission. Slušanje sa pravilnom vjerom i po podređenošću. absorbing everything and not blocking it with our rascal intelligence. Faith in the speaker, humility, destroying the faults of the mind, these are the three things that are necessary for perfect hearing. Faith in the speaker, humility, destroying the faults of the mind. Destroying the faults of the mind means not allowing the mind to wander to other subjects. We were just did a seminar in Zagreb a couple weeks ago about Manishiksha. And it's verses spoken by Raghunath Das Goswami to his mind. He's instructing his mind. It's like, last night my mind was a rascal. It's always a rascal, but sometimes it's more of a rascal. So I was trying to deal with it, and I, then finally I said, I said, listen, mind, come on, we're on the same program. We're, you know, we're, we're in this together, so don't bring me down. And I told him, just get right, do the right thing, think of Krishna. And he said, all right. <laughs> he listened. <laughs> you have to do that sometimes, so just tell your mind, shut up. <laughs> don't think of this stuff. Don't desire this. Just tell it to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> or you can be nice to it, my dear mind, <laughs> oh supreme personality of controller, <laughs> you know you want to control everything, and therefore take your control to Krishna's lotus feet and bring me with you. <laughs> so you can talk to your mind. This is what Manishiksha is about, and giving good instructions to your mind. He says, don't bathe in the donkey urine. He's talking to his mind. He says, don't take a bath in donkey urine. Who takes a bath in donkey urine? Not a very nice substance. It's not like rose water. <laughs> and, so, and he's saying that the pretensions, 
pretentiousness of, of thinking you're an advanced devotee. Oh my, don't think you're an advanced devotee, this is bathing the donkey you're in. Give up this, this mind, this before. So we can practice what Lord what Raghunath Das Goswami is teaching us, how to instruct the mind. If you let your mind do whatever it wants, guess what? It will do whatever it wants. <laughs> you have to direct your mind whereby your intelligence towards Krishna or devotional service. That's all. And sometimes you have to be a little strong with the mind. You can't be nice to it. Sometimes you're nice, sometimes you're not. It's like when you're trying to train a little child. You have to be a little straight and you have to be a little nice. You do whatever works. Okay? Keep that mind in the right way. And then it's, it is absorbing things in the right way. <coughs> and practice remembering Krishna's lotus feet. It's like you can see, right? There's two beautiful pictures, right? Two beautiful personalities, Krishna Balaram. And they're displaying their lotus feet. As soon as you just put your mind, your eyes on those lotus feet, you're there. And then let your mind to stay there and just see those beautiful lotus feet. And you can even think of how to serve while you're doing it. That's bhakti. You're with Krishna. That's why Krishna appears in his deity form to allow us to have, what we say, an opportunity to view something transcendental, something spiritual. So nice for the brother Shamsinder over there, you have Krishna Balaram over there, Prabhupada over there. These pictures are not just to decorate the walls so we can block up the holes in the walls. <laughs> Sometimes people put pictures up just to hide the, the, the bad paint or something. These pictures are for actually, the Prabhupada said, these pictures are windows into the spiritual realm. That's what he called them. He said, these artists have painted a window so we can actually see the spiritual realm. Yeah, that's a meditation. Yes. What does it mean when you say thinking of what to speak? Does it mean about the instruction? Or just concretely looking at the lotus feet? Yeah, both. Both. Look at the lotus feet. Massage the lotus feet, and stick your head there and keep it there. It's practical and it's doable. And when we say lotus feet, remember, that represents pure devotional service. But it's not only that, it is Krishna's lotus feet. The red color on the bottom of Krishna's lotus feet are like the reflections of the rising sun. When the sun has a beautiful, it creates a red cloud, red, red sky, and the sky is all red in colors. So Aruni, he is the a reflection of the sun energy, and he takes shelter. He's taking shelter of Krishna's lotus feet, so that's why Krishna's lotus feet are red. Because the reflection of the sun, whose name is Personality, is Aruni, has taken that his reflective nature and taking shelter there. But then there's another reason. 
The other reason is that when Radharani looks at Krishna's feet, his feet turn red because of her bhakti. So you can choose which one you like the best. <laughs> That's the red color. It's Radharani's glance on Krishna's That's nice. Beautiful. You think, oh, how much Radharani loves Krishna. And you think, wow, Radharani's perfect. She means she's like the best. She has so much love for Krishna, so what is it about Krishna that attracts Radharani so strongly? And you try to figure that out. <laughs> and you spent the whole lifetime trying to think about how wonderful Krishna is. And that's Lord Chaitanya. He's manifested in that mood to find out that wonder of Krishna. Radharani's bhakti. Oh. So we have an ocean of ways that we can direct our consciousness. This world, there's nothing really wonderful about this world. It's the same old stuff. Somebody's born, somebody dies. Somebody creates something new. Somebody kills somebody. Somebody wards somebody. It's the same old stuff. Somebody gets married, somebody has a baby. This is the same old stuff. It's like, when I was a kid there used to be a movie on television. They didn't have any channels in there. One movie was, was Frankenstein and the Wolfman. Mm -hmm. I was a kid, I used to watch it. I must have watched it about 32 times. <laughs> and I was thinking, there was nothing else to watch. <laughs> there was hardly any movies around. And so, you know, this material world is like a black and white movie that just repeats itself. <laughs> But Krishna's pastimes, although they might be repetition, they're not, they're always full of nuances, always full of variety, always full of, every time you come in contact with the same pastime, it becomes sweeter, even though it's the same lila, because there's something it's called dynamic as opposed to static. Static means something has a nature and you can go into it and you reach a certain level and you can't go any farther. But with transcendental activities or philosophy, the more you go into it, the deeper it reveals itself. And it's always giving more and more and more and more. So you know, you read the Bhagavatam once, you read it again, it's like you never read it before. And then you read it the third time, it's like it's reading it for the first time. Every time you read it, it's like, I read this before. <laughs> How is that? The thing is, as you become purified, you recognize more and more each time you read it. You can't see it. According to your level of spiritual development, you're hearing and seeing so much. But as you progress, you see more. And more is revealed. That's why we can't, can't ever get tired of hearing the same pastimes over, or the same philosophy. I remember I had an experience. I was just listening to Prabhupada talk, and he says, you're not this body. And uh, all of a sudden I said, wow. I heard it. I heard it. I heard. I heard. I. I was listening to to it before, but this time I heard it. See the difference? When you hear something, you actually realize it. When you listen to something, it's maybe nice philosophy. 
That's why repetition brings about this realization. By continuously hearing, and at one point it comes, and we finally get a realization of what we're hearing. Because that's just the nature of transcendental knowledge. It's not like material. Okay. Uh, the devotees have time to discuss a little more Krishna Katha, but he would like to ask one more question. Okay. And then maybe we should end. Did, did, you, did everybody get Prashadam yet? You didn't wait for me like yesterday. Okay, okay good. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Pitania, Pitania. Hvala ti, Mahareš, kad sad kad tako lijepo govoriš, odmah smo inspirirani da se nam entuzijazam, da više slušamo o Krišni, a automatski onda je drugi korak je da to predstavimo ljudima, publiki, van. Pa sam razmišljio, pošto jučer si ti rekao da moramo imati individualne projekte, a moramo imati zajednički projekt za priči. Hvala ti, Maraj, za dajem such a nice talk about Krishna and inspiring by sinema Krishna consciousness. And uh, I wanted now to hear that you mentioned that we should have individual projects and the projects uh, together to inspire and uh, to preach to the others. Mi se čini jako lepa ideja da imamo Rata Jatra u Varaždinu da predstavimo jako lepo taj program. Sad me jedna bakta zvao ovaj što radi hlavno cijepo s predstave o Krišni i tako. Bi mogli jako lepi program napraviti neki zajednički program da imamo. Jer je tema ovog seminara o suradnji. Tam je došla ideja znači da imamo više manjih programa, svi radimo neke svoje priče, kidovi dovoljno, ali da imamo neki zajednički pričnik, recimo Rata Jatra i Varaždin, tako. Rati Jatra. He is saying that he would like that devotees have individual preaching programs, but also that there is a collective program like Rata Jatra and Varaždin. He has some ideas about it. I talk with the government. They, oni su naklonjeni da je dozvog, može se bez problema da je dozvog. Yes, you need to talk about this devotees. Well, you see, I mean, one person had an idea, I want to start a temple, and he did it. So you have an idea, let's start a program, do it. Yeah, they're not alone, but together. You start it, then people will join. He started it by himself, and then he got people to come. The way it works in Krishna consciousness is if you wait for everyone to come along and do things, sometimes it takes forever. You just do something, and then you try to inspire everybody to join what you're doing, and then it grows like that. And then you get one person, another person like that. Prabhupada spread Krishna consciousness alone. He tried for support, didn't get anything, but it didn't stop him from trying. So that's just the way Krishna consciousness is. If you're inspired, you, you use your inspiration to develop things, Krishna will give you the intelligence and then gradually other people will come. But if you wait for everyone else to come, it may never happen because they don't they may not have the same inspiration. But once they see something coming that's happening, oh this looks nice, then people start to come. It's just the way it is. You have to show something before people actually become. If you can find someone who thinks like you, then you have two people who work together to start something. If you wait forever, then you lose your own enthusiasm. You could lose your own enthusiasm trying to wait for everyone else to become enthusiastic. Yes, Mithikashari, is that right? You can lose your own enthusiasm if you wait for everyone else to be enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah? No? She says no. 
You can try to convince other people, but ultimately you have to do it. <laughs> Just the way it is. You give less. Tatastu. Blessings. Blessings means that. Uh, Prabhupada wants this movement spread, so the blessings are already there. Just take them. Anybody who wants to preach or spread Krishna consciousness, you'll get the blessings of Prabhupada immediately. It's available. You start with a plan, and then as you try to make it happen, you move this way and that way to adjust according to how things develop. You can't see the future, but you can work with the present and start something, and then as you, as you move in a certain direction, then you can change this, add this. But you have to be determined. If you're not determined, then it doesn't work. You won't come to repair and I'll be First, put it on a flyer with a date and time, and then I'll come. <laughs> I can't come to something that's not happening yet. I'll come if something's happening. If it's not happening, I can't come. When could you come? What time? You want to make a Rath Yatra right away? <laughs> You can make it in, uh, let's see, last, last, uh, last weekend in September. It gives you enough time. Oh, this is good time. And last weekend in September. After the last time. Hmm? After the last time. The last time is in August. Yeah, this is good time. Uh, or even the, the second weekend in uh, September. No, maybe the third weekend. Let's see. September. What's the? Let's see. Do 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 do. What day is September 17th? What day is that? What day of the week is it? Uh, it's Sunday. Sunday. All right, so September 16th is good. 16th. Not, not the next weekend is no good because I'm busy that one. The last week, third weekend of September, or in the last weekend of September, either one. The third or fourth, fifth, either one. Cleveland. He decided, I'm going to have Rathi Yatra. So, by himself, and he just started it. He's just a regular devotee. was just fired up to have Rathi Yatra. He did it himself. And after a while, every year, there was a big Rathi Yatra. He was pulling in so many people. Senior devotees were coming. You know, some officials. He started it and kept it going for a while. So it only takes one person who's got a strong desire and is willing to 
you know, take on the austerities. You know, the you'll, pull, you'll, you'll get people to help you, but you have to be, you have to start it and you have to develop it. We have actually car, uh, this car from Amaharasa from Kuprinica is here. No, oh, good. In Lendava, used we make uh, three times, uh, third September first week. Mm -hmm. In then, uh, in this place is uh, we are part of, of culture program of city. They invited us and come five to ten thousand people watching. We <laughs> part of this. It's a big opportunity also. Yeah, it's good for the public. Rathiatra means the public benefits a lot. Okay, so I don't want to keep you too long. So thank you very much. You want Bhagavatam ki jai, Shri Prabhupada.
Ja sam se rezno danas zabravio, sam obrisati lekciju od jučer, tako da mi se snimalo samo sat i pet minuta.